Hello and welcome everybody to the Silent Hill Ascension pre-show. I'm Eduardo, joined here by the ever lovely Noah, who's gonna run you through our run of show. Hi everybody, so good to be with you here again. And Eduardo, as always, great to see you. So if production could throw that up on screen, we have our pre-show now, it's 5.40 p.m. Pacific time, and we are gathered here on Wednesdays, uh, Fridays, and Mondays. And then we have the show at 6 p.m. Pacific time every weekday. So there's a new episode of the show. And then the post-show right after on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So Eduardo, take us through it. Right, you know it, you've heard it again and again, but I'd love to say it. So, <laughs> Silent Hill Ascension is a socially interactive streaming series where all of you collectively shape and experience its ever-evolving story. Now, you're gonna collaborate and compete with others to try to make the choices you want to see occur, and that choice you made, by the way, with Aeric as the satyr, that was definitely one of those you competed in the most, but that's canon, because when that decision ends, the choice locks in as canon. That's the version of the show everyone sees. It's shaped by you, the participating audience, every single day. Now, we're gonna throw up to our setup scene video. Uh, in this, Astrid gets a call from Aurora because, and, and as you're gonna see throughout the scene, if you haven't ha seen it yet from yesterday, she feels a danger of losing Orson reemerge as his behavior. Uh, well, there's a slight reminiscence of how Orson behaved in the past, so uh, enjoy. I apologize for the delay. We've had people coming in with all kinds of strange injuries and we find ourselves a bit short-staffed. He seems healthy, but he's just not responsive to me or anyone. Well, let's have a look. Hey there, Orson. I'm just gonna shine a little light in your eyes, okay? Aurora, did you hear? We found Orson. He's alive. I did hear. I can't wait to come see him. See him? Well, he's being examined now. I understand. But it's the Barnavarnet policy that social workers check on their wards, especially after they've gone missing. Truly, it's just to make sure that he's not suffering from psychological issues that require treatment or stronger measures. Are you talking about taking Orson away? Right after I just got him back? Oh no, no dear. I'm just trying to help. If everything is in order and Orson doesn't pose any threat to himself or others, you'll be fine. How's our usual time and place? Um, sure. That'll be fine. Ah! Orson! Orson! Astrid! Orson! Orson, no! I... Ms. Johansson, I can't recommend that you continue overseeing Orson while he's in this state. But... Orson needs to pass his inspection from the Barnavana. I can't recommend exposing him to anyone right now. He needs to be sedated, for your safety as well as his. Drug the little bastard so he can't muck it all up. What? What did you say? I said he needs to be sedated. Maybe if his social worker saw the extent of his needs, they could help. If she doesn't see him, she won't know. If you don't let the proper people help him, then your son may never get better. Fine. But just overnight.
Welcome back, everybody. I hope you enjoyed seeing that scene again if you haven't had, and if you haven't had the chance to see it for the first time. Yes, and I gotta give a shout out here to uh, Raina Mare because she said I'm like a honey badger, cute but deadly. Well, thank you for the compliment, but actually my dog's name is Honey Badger. One of my dogs, so this is actually really awesome and kind of psychic, so good on you. But back to our uh, little kid with a bite. I mean, yeah, it's just Orson starting to bite. Hopefully not like Noah's dog, uh, but essentially, you know, kind of catatonic. Don't bite. She don't bite. She don't bite. Fair enough, fair enough. But, the, you know, doctor Only gets too close. if you come close. for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the thing. So, so yeah, but yeah, like, and that line, by the way, Noah, drug the little bastard so he can muck it all up. But you can see, like, kind of the screen shaking. Something's up with that line. What happened there? We might have to look into it later. Right now, I'm going to ask our production team to put up that Sylvania going across the world. Uh, and, and to kind of recap what we've had this week, really. Yes. So, we had... Eric partaking in the infamous Morgi as the satyr. So we all know and love the infamous Morgi. We did it, guys, we did it. And Nora, a stranger named Suspicious by Xavier, he's one to talk, has returned Faith. Rachel had to decide what to do with Faith now that she's back. So we have a lot going on here and we're gonna go back to uh, Norway later and, and touch on that because we do have to unpack what we saw there. But we also saw Nora um, explaining how she found Faith because Eric kind of interrogated her. Um, so pretty sus, pretty sus. I don't no, know. No, that's the thing. One of the things though, you know, it felt, it was kind of weird because like, uh, it was like, Eric, I'm going to do my best cop impression, detective impression, but then, you know, ended up being just like, uh, you know what, I'm just going to ask her questions, see what's up. But by the way, one of the, the lines from that discussion as well that really got to me, especially given, uh, you know, the, ti the title of the show you're watching, uh, all I could see was fog, uh, which... You know, it's kind of like, uh, you know, you got lost in the mix, right? It's like, oh, I took a wrong turn into the wrong town at the wrong time. Um, right. And now I'm in the wrong room in the, with the wrong cult. That's what's yeah, happening she, up with Nora. Yeah, of all the cities and all the fogs, you had to walk into this one. And uh, yeah, but she got totally lost in the fog sauce there. But she brought back faith and it seems... Um, well, it doesn't seem she told us that she has a past there that she she used to she came back for her brother and her brother died. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I just do not know. I'm well, still suspicious here. Well, the thing is, audience, Noah does know, but it's okay. I don't. I genuinely don't. <laughs> and the thing is, I'm with you, audience. We don't know what's going to happen as a result of that. But if there's anything, foreshadowing is kind of the light at. Well, that continues the dark and en endless tunnel of horror and miseries that is Silent Hill Ascension. But the, the nice part about this though, right, is Faith came back. But if it's anything like Orson, um, I'm not sure that her returning was gonna be that pleasant for either Eric or Rachel. Right, it's, she's, she doesn't seem to wanna hang out with her parents now. She's, uh, you know, also on the little bit on the aggressive end here. I don't know what happens to the kids that get lost in the fog, but they do come back with a little bit of a bite. No, yeah, that's it. Speaking of bites, we're going back to Norway. So that's gonna be on screen from production. As, as by the way, we noticed you in chat, like, you know, the we, because we got the, I, I got the mug, Noah's got the t-shirt, but uh, you know, it's trauma as well in Norway. So uh, Noah, take it away. Yes, so Astrid and Brit performed a goodbye ceremony. We saw that with a little bonfire, uh, at the end of which Astrid saw Orson outside. So Orson returned, but he did return home catatonic. So Astrid had to decide what to do with him, which we're still seeing that she's trying to figure out what the fuck to do, pardon me. But this child, uh, you know, by the way, I have to say a word later about this, but okay, Astrid also got a call from Aurora from Child Services, and she's afraid of losing Orson again because he's violent, and Aurora is like, you know, why she call him? No, that's true. And the thing is, right, uh, Orson kind of moved between doing nothing, smiling creepily, and biting the doctor. So 
free not super strong moves when child sir you know when when somebody's coming around and assessing whether the child should still be with you as the mother not the strong part here not a good argument for sticking around right but as you mentioned before we did see in the scene that he says just drug the little bastard and i do tend to think that the whole approach there is kind of um strict they're being pretty hard on both orson and astrid in my opinion you know some children have behavioral issues and they need to be treated humanely he's being treated like some kind of uh, and beast you have to train. We need to speak his language. Maybe biting is his love language. Uh, you don't know, but I feel like they're very stern with them. And it, I, I know that he also said drug the bastard. We don't know if it really happened or not, but it seems like really we know that the whole town has it against them. I feel they are very strict with them and stern. Yeah, but that's what happens when a therapist becomes a police officer in that town. There can't be that many people, and you're losing somebody like a pretty important skill set here. So, uh, right. and, and that was the other thing, right? That scene between uh, Astrid and Hagen, really important here, right? Because essentially, uh, Hagen kind of admitting, uh, look, I might have had it in for your family, uh, <laughs> BT Dubs, uh, and Astrid's like, what? Seriously? After what we've gone through? But like, you know. Kind of has that admission, so and we'll we'll dive into the decision. That's closing today. That's a pay. That's something I'll pay off later tonight in the show. Uh, you can tell that because of the amount of time remains. So that's actually important. That relationship between Astrid and Hagen really did develop over time. But Noah, what you're saying was correct, right? Astrid's just worried because she finally got her child back. Except now they're talking about taking the child away again. It's kind of it's almost a lot. So, but the thing is. Um, and in the post show, we'll talk about Astrid and Rachel as the mothers here, because we want to talk about their overarching arcs, but that's part of the fate and hope system. So no, if you can explain again, the fate and hope system to our audience, and then we'll kind of dive with you audience into, you know, that system and, and, and look really the much longer arches in season one. Right. So what Eduardo was saying is exactly right, because all the decisions and the endurance scenes and puzzles, all of these contribute to whether a character will face redemption, suffering, or damnation in the Silent Hill final. So their fate is decided across the length of the season, and a character's hope needs to be high enough for them to survive a crucial story moment, as we've seen in the past, Carl uh, being redeemed, Toby, not so much rest no. in peace to to uh, be being very dead <laughs> being dead and you know at least he's reunited with his sister <laughs> but uh, uh, let's talk a little bit more let's dive a bit deeper here about the collective delusions and the long-term outcomes of everything no of course so so the big thing we hear right and, and hope is the main differentiator between really Ashton and rachel i mean their characters are different right rachel's kind of much more into the thick of things sacrifices the eye when she needs things done um <laughs> Now, what she got out of that, maybe not what she bargained for, more than she bargained for. But on the other side, Astrid, a little more cool, calm, collected. But she's got enough of the shit, basically, right? Mm -hmm. Like, like I mean, come on. She's trying to, like, handle this. But, like, the kid vanishes, and finally the kid comes back, and they're like, we've got to take the kid away. Like, honestly, uh, had to deal with Carl, had to deal with her mother. Uh, it seems like, honestly, the only relationship that's semi-salvageable is the one with Britt. Right, which I know that we are all feeling, uh, well, I don't know that we are all feeling, but many of the audience members uh, did feel that it's important to them to remain, uh, retain some kind of a thread of sanity and closeness here in this fog, you know, have some kind of thread that at least, um, yeah, that at least uh, there will be one relationship that's somewhat functioning here. Oh, well, for sure. So, and again, we're going to have a decision closing today. Our production team is going to put that up. Uh, well, you and the audience probably know what's closing, but we're going to have it up. Nora's going to read it. We'll, we'll break that down. Yes. So, how will Astrid handle Hogan's apology? And we know that it's a fate decision. So, if she has three options here, she can fully accept it, which would be the redemption option, or coldly accept it, which is suffering, or refuse all together to accept it. No accepting. Damnation. So, I will tell you something. I like Haugen, and I've always liked Haugen. I do want to see her accepting the apology. 
um, you know, because I'm interested in like, what kind of relationship does Haugen exactly want? <laughs> like, the, what does she want? It's like, she was interrogating her, kind of being a hard ass and giving her a terrible time. And then she's like, oh, I'm sorry. It's because I'm really traumatized by your family and my daughter is dead, but I still talk to her and she knows where Orson is. But then she's like, I'm sorry. This was, <laughs> this was a little bit much. Like, <laughs> let's just start again, you know? No, and, and that's the finger, right? So like Astrid, like in that scene we saw was like pretty coldly it, right? But then you like go on the other side of the door. Maybe you think about figs. That's really what this decision to me seems to be about. Uh, now we got 11 minutes left on it. Um, right now, the redemption option is winning. Um, now that said, uh, there's not that many influence points. Part of it is because you were all, uh, <laughs> you're still drained from the Morgy, honestly, that's the... Uh, that's the actual official professional term, trust me. The uh, Morgy well, took a lot out of us. No, it's for sure. We really sweat there, you know, with a lot of bodily fluids. Uh, well, I mean, uh, look, look, I don't ask what masks you have in the closet. Um, so, <laughs> don't so ask, you don't, don't ask from me ever, so that's all. But it's all don't good. Mask, and I don't, don't ask don't you, tell. audience. To be fair, I don't ask the audience ever what masks they have in the closet. We all have some. But now. <laughs> Uh, right now, right, there's a little rally on suffering. Um, if you wanted to change the decision, if you really str felt strongly about it, this is the time. But right now it's on redemption, Noah. So like the option that you preferred is is uh, currently winning, so to speak. So, um, and that's closing in 10 minutes. So it is looking like the redemption option is gonna take it. But honestly, uh, if you wanted the suffering or damnation option to take it as a, as a few of you audience members would, I think it's doable, but maybe you don't. You're like, you know what, Hogan's cool. She doesn't, you know, Astrid's cool. We don't need them to suffer horrible fate. We'll save their horrible fate things for different people. Uh, right. And that's part of it, right? It's it's you at home having to decide where you kind of want to have that influence uh, and where and what you'd like to change. Yeah, so I also like the drama and the enthusiasm of seeing everybody rally. You know, I'm not going to be mad if it's not redemption, let's say. I'm going to be happy either way. And I'm curious to see what develops there. Sure. In the meantime, Noah, our audience needs influence points. Our show's going to start, so endurance scenes, it's up to you to explain it once again to them. Yes. So when the endurance scene starts, uh, you will have to time your inputs to the actions you see on screen to help our character. Um, and the collective success means that the character's hope will rise, uh, and otherwise it will fall. Um, but if a character fails enough endurance scenes, they may not survive future encounters, leading to their permanent death in the story. So these endurance scenes are one of the best places to earn large amount of influence points. And just remember, success and failure, it's part of the collective story. It's not an individual judgment here, but that's a really good way for you to get a lot of the influence points so that we can have some drama in the decisions. <laughs> yeah, and, and tonight I do have some good news. So, so one of the things is on last Tuesday, we actually had a boss appear. Tonight you will also get a scene with a boss appearing. Now the thing with those scenes, like them or not, if you take part of them, just participating will unlock the maximum of 2,400 influence points. So if you know you're like kind of uh, relaxing, sitting back, I would recommend a few clicks when the boss appears and that will help you get that, that uh, influence point total up. And again, you decide whether you hinder the, hinder the boss or if you want the character to have an untimely fate, that's up to you. But do participate, make sure to collect those influence points for future decisions. Now Noah, uh, the show's gonna start really soon. I know normally we have a little bit of back and forth, but it's less than a minute, so uh, again, the important things for you, the audience at home, to know. In Norway, it's still interpersonal drama. Orson's still biting people. The kids were still missing. We haven't seen too much of Faith in action yet. Right now, it's really that laser focus on Eric and Rachel. Uh, that's gonna be kind of your overarching uh, section. Now, what is for certain? Noah and myself will be back after the show. We will break down those scenes for you. It will be in our company. Uh, we love to do it. We love to see you. But in the meantime, we want you to enjoy the show. Uh, have a great time, and we'll see you right after.